Hey guys, and welcome back to another Road to Rag video. Today, we're going to go over something I mentioned in the last video. Dedicated crafters, bankers, and world drop recipes worth holding on to. While I gave a small example last time, I'm going to go over this in a bit more detail today. I'm splitting this into two parts, which I'll upload back to back, so be sure to check out part two right after this. But before we begin, I want to clarify that I am not a hardcore mod, and I have no say on how things are done. I'm just a guy who loves to research and strategize for complex goals or challenges in games. So if my videos come off as, this is how you need to do things, please forgive me. I'm sure some of you can relate here, but once you've been in management or a position of authority for a while, it's hard to think like an employee again. And the same applies here. It's just easier for me to think and organize as if I was in charge. So play how you want, and remember, getting a second opinion can really help you out both in real life and in hardcore. So let's begin. I'm going to quickly pull a clip from my last video where I gave an example, and then I'll dive deeper into this. But we need players to get to max level, max a profession, and then to help craft items and gear others while staying safe. Let's say somebody happens to find the Crusader enchant, and they gave it to another player who has enchanting, and then that player goes off and dies trying to gear it for the raid. That's a waste of the enchant, and that's why we need dedicated crafters. People who are willing to join into the event with no expectation of raiding. As I stated in that clip, having extra people who aren't risking their characters trying to gear up for the raid will be paramount to our success. The tailor who makes upgraded bags and cloth gear, the gatherers running circles around the zones looking for mats to supply the alchemists, blacksmiths, and leatherworkers who can make decent high-level gear to help the fresh sixties survive a bit longer. Plus the more high-level crafters we have, dedicated or not, the more we can stock up on items like mooncloth, arcanite bars, and cured rugged hides. Getting to 60 and maxing the profession is the essential of being a crafter, but there's definitely a way to push that further. While few, there are recipes that craft a BOE item, while the recipes themselves are BOP. So if you really want to dedicate yourself to the profession, you'll need to risk your character in an attempt to gather these recipes. I'll cover those in a bit more when I talk about each profession. Even though we're allowed to trade within the 60 guild, people have to be online and around in order to trade with each other. So especially in the case of enchanters, but still as important for the other professions, having multiple dedicated people for each profession will be a massive boon. Now, am I saying we need players to level to 60 and then just sit there acting as a mule for everyone else? No, of course not. No one would want to do that. But there are going to be situations where wool drop recipes or best in slot BOE items show up in somebody's loot. And if we don't have a dedicated crafter who can use that recipe yet, or someone who's really close to being fully geared who could use that BOE, then somebody's going to have to hold on to it. Sure, if you found it, you could hold on to it. But if you die before you can pass off the item, then what? It's a waste. And frankly, in this challenge, we can't afford to be wasteful. The easiest solution in my mind is to have people who are playing the crafting side act as the bankers. But then you might say, how is that any different from having a bank alt and using a mailbox? Simple. Picture this. You're playing on your normal tune. You decide you need a bank alt for whatever reason. So you log off, create a character, and run them to the nearest city. Then you hop back on your other tune and start mailing items off. Only took you maybe 10 minutes. But in this hardcore environment, as I said earlier, people have to be online and around in order to trade with each other. Let's say you did find that Crusader enchant and you start asking around a guild, hey, who's the chanters? You find out there's two of them so far, but both of them are offline. One only gets to play a few days a week and the other happens to only play during the hours that you're at work. So now you're kind of stuck with it and you still run the risk of dying without passing it off. Sure, you could trade it to another crafter who isn't an enchanter and they could pass it off again later, but again, people have to be online. So there is a difference. There's another reason we need bankers, and it's a big one. If you look at the massive amount of potions, elixirs, and flasks that are going to be needed for this raid, and even going into the 60 dungeons for gear, we're going to need massive stockpiles ready to go. And if you think about every buff or effect you can get from potions, that's a lot of filled bags. Someone's going to have to hold on to this stuff to pass out as needed. So I've gone ahead and pulled together a datasheet covering all the high-end profession crafted BOEs, world drop recipes, and other profession items that I felt would be helpful to know. I'm going to go through this decently quick, but none of the things I'm going to list come from raids, and most recipes I mention are BOE so they can be picked up and given to crafters. I'll make a note when otherwise. I also won't be talking about recipes that create BOP items such as the tailoring chest, as most people already know what these are and whether or not they're going to go for them, with one notable exception. Also, any vendor recipes, I'll be specifically talking about alliance vendors since we're going to Alley for Road to Rack. And speaking of vendor recipes, keep in mind that recipes that require reputation to buy are BOP, so you'll have to grind that rep yourself. Enchanting is a beast on its own due to the inability to level up playing solo and hardcore. 
you'd either have to run duo with a blacksmith or wait to 60 to attempt to level it, and that's still not an easy thing to do without the auction house. There's also the issue that enchanting has more recipe drops from high level dungeons than any other profession. But there is a trade-off. Other than raid drop recipes, there are no dropped BOP recipes, so people trying to get for raid can snag these up and pass them along to crafters as well. So here's what you'll want to target. From dungeons, you have life stealing off the spectral researchers and major spirit to two-handed off the scolomance adepts, both in scolo. Major intellect to two-hander comes from the crimson sorcerers in Stratholm. Greater strength to gloves comes from stonespire mystics in LBRS. And smoking heart of the mountain, a must-have for feral tanks from Lord Rockar and BRD. Just be sure to give that last one to a feral druid. While the recipe is BOE, the trinket made is BOP. From out in the open world, there's Crusader from Scarlet Soilbinders in Western Plaguelands, Major Man at a Chest from Scarlet Enchanters in Eastern Plaguelands, Superior Strength to Bracers from Deadwind Warlocks in Deadwind Pass, Greater Intellect to Bracers from Vilebrand Shadowcasters in Jinthal Lore, Greater Agility to Gloves from the Lagashi Rogues in Azjara, and Lesser Agility to Cloak from Syndicate Assassins in Altrak or from the Wastewander Assassins in Scofflaws in Tenaris. Lastly, two vendor recipes to pick up. Major Health to Chest from Kia in Winterspring, and Superior Defense to Cloak from Lorelei, Wintersong, and Moonglade. I'll cover all the random world drops for all professions in the second video. Hopefully, we can get quite a few people with enchanting, as it's a bit more difficult to gather the mats compared to the gathering professions. Running dungeons just for the purpose of disenchanting is way more of a risk than getting thorium or leather. Quick tip, remember, there are websites such as wowprofessions.com that list out everything you need to quickly power level a profession up to 300. Can be useful while actually leveling for other professions, but as most people will probably pick up enchanting after hitting 60, it's good to keep in mind. Again, as with enchanting, alchemy has no dropped BOP recipes, but there are plenty of recipes that you can target farm, the most important being Flask of Titans, which comes from General Dracosath and UBRS. Flask of Petrification is another great option, but it's a world drop. Next two on the list are Greater Fire and Greater Arcane Protection, which come from Firebrand Invokers and Pyromancers in LBRS, and from the 57 to 58 Elite Cobalt Mage Weavers over in Winterspring, respectively. Elixir of Mongoose can be farmed from either Lagashi Rogues in Azura or the Jadefire Rogues in Felwood. There's also Restorative Potion, which can be obtained from the quest Badlands Reagent Run 2, which is only available to Alchemists after completing the initial quest line. Lastly, vendor recipes you'll want to grab are obviously the Arcanite Bar Transmute from Alchemist Pestlezog in Tenaris, Elixir of Superior Defense and Free Action Potion from Suli Berry Fizz in Ironforge, and Elixir of Shadow Power from Maria Lumiere in Stormwind. Now, engineering has a few notable recipes that make BOE items, but at the same time, most of them still require engineering to use. I'm sure there will be plenty of raiders who take it as a primary profession, so be on the lookout for these recipes. The Flame Reflector Trinket will probably be a must, and can be obtained from Solacar, Flame Wraith, and UBRS. If you have 300 engineering, you can grab the recipe for the Field Repair Bot in BRD. It's looted by clicking a scroll on the ground in Golem Lord Argomach's room. Finally, the Arcanite Draglin Trinket comes from the Cobalt Mage Weavers again in Winterspring. Don't forget to train Salt Shaker for the leather workers out there. And for those of you going Goblin Engineering, make sure to make the recipe for Goblin Rocket Fuel to give to your fellow alchemist. I did say I'd talk about random world drop recipes in part 2, but I want to mention two things here. The sniper scope is the best ranged attachment outside of raids, and thorium shells, which can be converted to thorium arrows, will be the best animal available. So here's hoping somebody finds these quickly. Yes, technically there's the miniature cannon shots from Cannon Master Willy, and the doom shot arrows from Vashka Jin and LBRS, but these are chance drops and not worth the risk of dying to obtain multiple stacks of. So that's it for part 1. Be sure to check out part 2 where I'll cover the armor crafting professions and the random world drops. I'm trying to keep these videos under 10 minutes so it's not a massive info dump. I'll have links down below for everything. See you soon.